Alright, welcome back. This is part two of the Battle of Shiloh in the legendary Confederate campaign in Ultimate General Civil War. And I feel a little better about the left side of my line than I do the right right now. But I do think I need to move this up because uh, I may get overwhelmed over here otherwise. I'm going to try and fold this up a little bit. Although it looks like my skirmishers are driving off entire brigades at the moment, so maybe I'm okay. slow these guys down because people are lagging behind a little bit. He's in pretty good condition so I'm going to run him. Get him up there. They need the support from that additional unit. Stewart just lost his brigade commander so we got to be cautious here. We'll throw battle up into the line. This is kind of funny. We got Peabody on my side, and he's got one up here as well. Same name. I'm going to shift a brigade over this way. Skirmishers can't do this all on their own. And the only objective here is just to hold Shiloh Church against his little counterattack. Here comes General Grant to observe what's happening. Just gonna run the supplies supplies down the line here. Oh, my cavalry should not be getting up that close. I'm just kind of looking at all the casualties to see how things are going. 196 kills, 7 deaths. 304 to 84. 106 to 20. Uh, Evans, of course, is the one brigade that's not doing well at the moment. 345, 132. 630 to 105. This is exactly what I need to be seeing if I'm going to have any shot in this battle. Skirmishers also doing really well. Yeah, I gotta get over here with the supplies. All right, we'll drop Evan skirmishers back until they get supplied. All right, I've got him out in the open here, so that helps. He's hitting me pretty hard with his artillery, but I'm in the woods, so it's not having much of an effect. Oh good, this is actually helpful, because now I can get up to the edge of these woods, keep him out in the open. I'm going to have to have one unit in the open themselves, and that will have to be camper. Well, maybe we can hold him back here in these woods. I 
know he's got more infantry over here. That's why I'm hesitating to send my cavalry up. And honestly, I just... I need to not overplay my hand because it's going pretty well in terms of the numbers right now for me. I don't want to mess that up by getting greedy. Besides, I'm a little nervous about what happens when the next phase opens up. I want to get Kemper up here to help out against Hillebrand. Nope, not needed. Let's go ahead and drop him back. Alright, that's going to do it for this part, even though he's starting to bring a counterattack. Alright, we move on to the part around the hornet's nest. This is one of the most infamous uh, parts of the battle, or famous. It's where the Union makes a long, uh, multi-hour stand that buys time for Grant's forces to dig in up here at Pittsburgh Landing. And again, this is not necessary to the battle for me. If I just hold exactly where I am right now, I win the battle. So I, I really have no reason to push forward. At the same time, I do have cause for concern because uh, I, unless he starts pulling back, I'm going to have a rough time on this battle line here. He's just He's got the numbers in his favor at the moment. Where's the supplies? We need some supplies. Yeah, we're sending them up. Okay. No pond, what are you doing? Stay where you are. I'm gonna try to get Martin up here on the flank. Ammo is coming. Oh, there we go. All right, I guess we're okay now because we drove off some of these guys. I'm definitely not going to press all the way to the hornet's nest. I'll drive these guys out of here and then I'll be content because I'm holding the line where I need to. I just need to be thinking about a strong defensive position for the counterattack. Oh, there's a unit up there. Darn it. Okay. There's one I can't see. He's right up in here somewhere and he's firing down on my flank and Martin paid for it. push this forward just to drive off these guns. I need to get Tuttle out of here. was killed because I just drove him headlong into these guns but I'm trying to drive those guns off.
will stay them back. He's getting beat right now. At least still I can get up on these guys' flanks. Alright, Pond, you're taking a lot of yeah, a lot of canister fire there. Tell you what, this is where we need to be content with the gains. And not try to push too hard. Because all the all the gains I'm making on the left side of my line, I'm losing here. So I need to drive these guys off and then just recover. skirmishers that are taking a lot of casualties, I'm going to reattach them to their units. At least for now. let this kind of play out. Oh, jeez. I'm just trying to get these guys reattached. They walked right into the field of fire and got flanked. I should have sent them around to the rear before I gave them the order. day for him. Let's get him out of there. So just looking here, Gibson pretty much even. Pond up about 300. Anderson up about 170, so that gives me what about a 500 advantage. There's another 200 there, so that's 700 down 150 there so down back down to 550 I'm just doing some math in my head here 350 so that's uh, 900 Honestly, at best, I maybe, maybe, what are you doing? Whoa, what just happened here? At best, I'm maybe plus 200 in the casualties on this side right now. That is not, not at all what I need. So I probably could have played this, this side better. He sent a unit right through me, like he was, like they were standing still. He's chasing after these supplies, but there's nothing there. They're empty. You can have them. Uh, is that a glitch? He's just running straight down. Really strange. I'm a little nervous about supply right now because I'm out. So I'm going to shut down these guns. Not a lot to be gained by having an artillery battle with these guys right now. Go up and see if we can drive these guys off.
Come on, what do we gotta do to get rid of Williams? Besides run out of ammunition. So this is basically going to be the, be it for this part of the battle, and then of course it's going to open up toward Pittsburgh Landing, but I have no intention of getting anywhere near Pittsburgh Landing. I'm just trying to get Williams driven off, but it is not working. unit with actual ammo have a crack at him. Jeez, how many how many casualties can he take? So that's not working too well. How about if we send in some infantry along with them? All right, we'll let him go because this part of the battle is about to end anyway. All right, we got one more phase for day one. The part that we're not gonna touch and that's going after Pittsburgh Landing. There's no way on earth I can breach those defenses right now. So we're gonna inflict some casualties and we're gonna watch him run away. Now, we are gonna jump on these batteries. It's too juicy a target not to take. Yeah, you can have those supplies back there. They're empty. That battery's gonna disappear and then we're gonna try to hit Taylor before he has a chance to fire. There we go. I'm thinking there's not a lot of need for me to get my men into some kind of a battle line for day two because it's probably going to reset those lines anyway. I'm going to go up and take care of these batteries though. Where'd my other unit of cavalry go? There's no way they got destroyed. Oh, they're both there, okay. They were just overlapping each other somehow. I couldn't see them. All right, we finally drove Williams off. I gotta be cautious here. 
I don't know what he's got sitting back here. I don't want to run headlong into a couple of brigades that I don't know are there. I'm just trying to take advantage and destroy a few units that he won't have for the second day. Alright, good. That battery's gone. Now let's pull these guys out. Oh, wait. There's another opportunity there. They're both at condition zero, though. Cavalry's done really, really well for me. I, I've got a limited amount, but they've done really well. That seems tempting, but I don't know what else is back here, so I'm not going to take the chance. This is going to get pretty quiet now. I'm not going to advance any further. In fact, I'm going to drop back. So I'll actually go ahead and end the video here. If anything else of note happens, I will come back in. Otherwise, I'm going to come right to the last phase of the battle. Uh, the April 7th phase. Alright, so here's as I expected and as I feared, uh, I'm facing almost 2 to 1 odds on day 2. 68,000 men, so even with every casualties that I, every one of those casualties I inflicted on him, he still comes back with even more men because he's gotten that reinforcement from Buell's army. I'm down to just 36,000. I honestly don't see how I do this without my army being destroyed. So let's pause for just a second and look at what we need to do in order to win. I've got to hold Spain Field or Larkin Bell Field plus Shiloh Church. Uh, so basically I just need to hold everything that I currently have back to this line. The only thing I would possibly have going for me would be that I can slow him down somehow. But I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. The best thing I can think to do is to drop my forces back over to here and try to hang on for dear life as best I can. And see how it goes. I also have ammo issues, which it does, definitely does not help. I've got four hours to hang on from his counterattack. Some of these units aren't even weren't even selected. Maybe we just need to do it this way. We'll do one division here. A division here. A division here. division and reserve. We'll see what that does. Who is that down here? Oh, it's Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm going to need some skirmishers just to buy some time to get into a battle line. Because some of his units are coming fast. He's coming fast. He is not messing around at all.
All right, guys, pull back. I just don't think this is going to end well at all. Probably need to draw the battle line up here just because that gives me a field of fire into the open against him. Yeah, this is probably the place I need to make my stand. That gives me the best chance with the open ground in front of me. Oh, my poor skirmishers. Not feeling good about this at all. Only thing I can hope is that he's not sending all of his troops. Oh, we do have some supplies here. Where are my out of supply folks? They're over on this side. Looks like he's coming at the flanks. Three hours to go. Try 
trying to get the supplies over to you guys. I guess it's just the artillery that's without supply right now. This is where he's going to try to hit me. Because he knows he takes this, he wins. He doesn't even need to worry about the other two. If he's going to hang back and get into a shooting match, maybe I've got a shot. I wish I had more than one unit of reserve there, but I just can't risk thinning my line anywhere right now. I'm still holding everything I need. have a lot of supply but what I have I'm gonna make sure I give these guys he's gonna hit me all the way along the line tell you what let's do this Get these skirmishers out, try to extend the line. I don't know what's happening here, but I don't like it. I guess I just don't have enough room for another brigade on the line there. So we'll just drop battle back a little bit. Use him as a reserve. Ah, oh, jeez. He's coming around. It's too many men. Too many men. I can't hold against all this. Alright, it's time to get creative. At least his first melee attack is coming at the spot where I've got an extra unit on the line. One of the spots. Ah, but that caused one of my other units to be routed because they got flanked. need to cause a distraction or a couple of them all right 
let's pause for a second. We got two hours to go. Somehow I've got to hang on to both of these objectives. It's a tall order, but I don't want to lose this battle. All right, my main concern right now is all the way over here on my left. feel like I'm going to run out of men. I'm going to run out of men. I'm going to run out of supply. coming at my skirmishers over here. Oh, that worked out nicely, actually. He tried to come in at me. I'm gonna wipe out okay and they're gone I just wiped out his cavalry there so that's some good news a little bit of good news happening over on my left let's see how things are going on the right because I'm concerned about attrition and just running out of men over here yeah Chalmers skirmishers do not need to be going melee with these guys in fact they're gonna get wiped out yeah they're gone lost those men I don't even want to watch. It's ugly. Hour 44 to go. I feel like things are stabilized here, but he looks like he's sending in more units. The center's pretty empty. Of course, uh, another concern is ammunition. How about... He may have units back here, so I've got to be cautious of that. I don't want to give orders to go too far at a time. starting to feel like I have a chance. I may just pull this off. We gotta get Bedford Forrest into the action here. He's a, dis he's a mounted infantry unit. I don't know. We'll keep him mounted for now and see where we run into a desperate situation that might call for a last minute assistance. I'm going to use Jenkins just because he's not one of my units, so he's kind of expendable over the next hour and a half. All right, I feel like I'm going to hold Shiloh Church. So then the other issue is here, especially with some ammo concerns. But I can always pull from my center if I need to because I think I'm pretty solid there. Yeah, um... If you'd asked me at the start of the battle, I'd have given my odds at about 1 in 3 of holding for the 
draw. Uh, I'd give myself maybe two and three now. I feel like my odds have improved. I feel like I may just do this. Okay, yeah, he does have... That's why I sent Jenkins, because Jenkins was expendable. I just wanted to see what was going on up there, and he does have his unit still at Pittsburgh Landing. Because if he had left that empty, I could have taken that and won the battle. Alright, he just sent a melee attack. Let's pause for a second and deal with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Forrest over and dismount him. No, Gibson, don't get sucked in, buddy. Stay here. Anderson, you need to turn back around. Okay, just an hour to go. All right, all right. Ammo issues in the center. Not much I can do about that. I'm out of supply. But he's he's kind of let up on my right now. So maybe we send some of these skirmishers over. Look at you, he sent an uh, infantry brigade at me. At least he's got some ammo issues too. Hour and six. Cavalry's had a good day. I don't want to lose them because of something reckless at the end. So let's get them to safety. No, 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 no. Don't get flanked and end up running in a really bad location. Are gonna leave Jenkins up here. Get him dismounted. Just let him be a distraction. Okay. 56 minutes to go. We're still in a position for a draw. gonna make one more attempt on Shiloh Church. I have no doubt that's what he's planning. Everybody's short on ammo on my left. Honestly, everybody's short on ammo pretty much along my line at this point. All right, let's see. 48 minutes to go. I'm kind of advancing this faster just because I want it to end. I'm nervous about my ability. But honestly, if I can see the whole field here, sometimes you can see movements a little better when you're fast forwarding because it accents them a little more. And if there's a major movement by the enemy in one direction, you can sometimes notice that a little better when you've got a field this long. But he doesn't appear to be making any big moves. So I'm just going to hang on and I'll hit pause as soon as I see him make an assault somewhere, which I expect is going to happen on Shiloh Church. 
That's his best bet to try and win, win the battle at the last second. But I may just hang on. I got 20 minutes to go. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh, brutal, brutal battle. 15 minutes. I just, I keep, I keep expecting he's gonna make a last-second assault somewhere. But it looks like we're just gonna shoot it out. Pull these Napoleons out. Six minutes. Okay, it looks like we're gonna, gonna hang on for a draw. Somehow, some way. I wasn't sure that was gonna happen. There we have it. All right, so we have a draw at Shiloh. Look at those numbers, 76,000 to 39,000 on a legendary difficulty, but somehow I managed to hang on, um, inflicted almost two to one, ca actually by the time you count everything, yeah, two to one casualties, especially uh, big time casualties on his guns. But man, I didn't, don't have a lot to show for it. I wish I had more to show for it. Grab some Napoleons, a few howitzers, but very little to show considering everything that happened there. Some promotions, that's going to be helpful. Got my first uh, major generals. All right, so let's see where things stand now after Shiloh. Hopefully we can uh, start building up the army a little bit here. I think I'm going to go one more reconnaissance because that's going to get me to... Um, There we go. Current army strength during battle, which is what I want. So reputation, of course, uh, didn't really gain anything there. But let's see where we're at moving forward. They sent him some new rifles and cannons, so his armory's number's going to go up. He didn't gain nearly enough recruits to make up for what he lost, so I did give him a nice hit to his army size. And we've got these three uh, battles here in the, the Valley Campaign, which should all go really well for me, I think before we start getting into the seven days fight, which will be pretty interesting to see how that all plays out. Uh, so we're gonna go in order on these. So first Winchester's up first. Let's see what the numbers look like there. I'm thinking it's 10 or 12 brigades I take into that fight, but I could be wrong. Um, all right, so it's eight and we're on the offensive on that one. So I can definitely, I should have him outnumbered in that battle. So that should be helpful. Whew, okay, so there you have it. There's Shiloh. Um, I would certainly welcome your observations. Anything you think I could have done differently or better or uh, just, you know, anything at all that you saw that maybe I don't see. Uh, as I've mentioned before, sometimes we, we see what we want to see and we need some fresh eyes to look at things. So I would love to hear your input, your observations. Maybe you learned a couple of things along the way as well. Maybe not. That's okay. If you hit that thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of my other videos, and we will see you next time with the Valley Campaign. Thanks for watching.